Hey guys, it's Brian, and today I have somewhat of an informational video for you, something a little bit different. But it's a topic that often comes up with ceiling fan collectors. What happens when you're missing the original mounting parts for ceiling fans? Now, in this case, this is the first generation Fasco Charleston ceiling fan that I picked up from Habitat for Humanity in Akron. And when I got it, it was missing the original mounting grommet. Now, this is actually an easier fix than you think. You don't necessarily have to use OEM parts to fix one of these, because God knows if you have a 40-year-old ceiling fan like this one, you know, nine times out of 10, those rubber bushings on the top of the down rod are usually deteriorated or dry rotted or just not there at all. So in this case, what I did was I went to Ace Hardware and I got two electrical rubber bushings and a bolt to go through it. Now this is a 3 8 diameter rubber bushing, so you don't have to go too far to makeshift something up. I also used a 3 8 number 16 bolt. As you can see, I have a baggie in here of the parts and I'll show you how to make this and I actually have to give credit to Dan Spiffy Newman for the idea on how to do this basically I went to Ace Hardware I got two of these rubber grommets you can find them in the electrical section and you can see both of them put together like this pretty much looks like what you need now in Dan's video, he used a piece of vinyl tubing to go in between the two ends to basically keep it solid so that the hook would not rub in that gap there and deteriorate the rubber. Now in the case of this Fasco Charleston here, that won't really make a difference because the vinyl tubing that I was going to use just didn't work out. So honestly, you don't need to do that, you know, because these parts are cheap enough as it is to get. And honestly, if they deteriorate, you can always get more. But in the case of this one, I didn't do that. So what I did get, let me flatten this out a little bit here so I can see it a little bit better to tell you exactly what I got. Now, each one of those rubber bushings, it was a 3 8 rubber bushing inner diameter. I got four of them. As you can see, there was two on that down rod, and then there's two here. There are $2.99 a piece at Ace Hardware. Um, depending on what store you go to, Ace, True Value, Do It Yourself, you know, whatever home hardware store in your town that you have, there'll be different prices, but these are $2.99 a piece. Not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world, but you know what? For quality, I'll pay the extra, I don't care. Uh, and then I got a 3 8 bolt that has neoprene on the end. This is actually technically a lock bolt with neoprene on the end so to make sure that it doesn't unscrew itself. I got two of those, there were 3 8 number 16 bolts, so they're metric. They're 23 cents a piece. And then the bolt itself is a hex head, as you can see. <clears throat> That's a 3 8 by one and a half bolt. Two of those are about 55 cents a piece. So basically, in a nutshell, this is what you do. Flip this one over. You take your bolt. You put it inside, and then you don't want to force it too much because it might damage the rubber a little bit, but you just kind of slide it down like so. And then on the other end, the same thing. Go through the opposite way. Sorry, it's really hard to do this with just one hand. So, In a nutshell, that's what it should look like. And then on the one end, stand it up like so, you take your nut, then you just 
work it on like so. There you go. You got yourself a grommet. Now, <clears throat> in the case of this down rod, basically what I did, instead of doing it that way because it's easier, I fit the two grommets onto the claw like so. Then I put the bolt through it and then put the nut on the end. So that way, it pretty much was as snug as it could be. In Dan's video, he put a piece of vinyl tubing in between there, but I don't, that really didn't work out for me when I tried that. And to be quite honest, these are pretty good quality rubber bushings. So if they deteriorate, it's no big deal. I can always get more. Um, and you can do this based on the width of the claw on your fan. Now, Fasco Charleston has a decently narrow claw to it. A Hunter Original would be a little bit wider. And then SMC fans like the A52 and the Lagunas, the early Lagunas, are, I think, a little bit narrower than this. So you really have to kind of um, fit it to uh, the specs and size on your fan. But in this case, on a Fasco first-gen Charleston and a Parlor fan, they all use the same mounting system. First-gen Parlor, uh, sorry, first-gen Charlestons and Parlor fans do. So in this case, it was actually relatively easy. And then on a Hunter Original, you can actually still get the factory grommets for a Hunter Original because they still make them. But if you don't have it and you don't want to pay X amount of money to get a Hunter product because they are quite expensive, you can actually makeshift your own grommet, like so. And in this case, it's permanently fixed onto the end here. So this is actually gonna work really nicely for this fan. So that's a little uh, information on how to make your own grommets. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Keep watching, more videos to come.